Okay, so today's topic is going to be about evolution, and all of Earth's inhabitants are related. Okay, now that's easy to kind of understand if we're comparing it like a tuna to a trout, because obviously they both had fish like ancestors. But supposing we compare something like a tuna, a human, and a frog. Okay, let's take a look at that. So, all right, these are all lines of fish. You can see how they all evolved from the same thing. But when we go to organisms that are a little different, okay, whoops. Like for example here, uh, we have a fish, we have a frog, okay, and a mammal. There's quite a difference between them. Okay, so it's a little bit more difficult to understand. Oops, what's going on here? And um, humans and, and tunas and frogs, if you take a look at the um, evolutionary uh, tree here, they all did have a common vertebral ancestor. I mean, you can look here and look back and you can see that these are all vertebrates, okay? They evolved about 425 million years ago. Okay, but you can see the branching off when it did occur. So evolution explains how all organisms, past and present, are related to one another, and that all life is connected and can be traced back to the primeval prokaryotes. See, down here you see the first, well, this is complex multicellular organisms. Let's look at another one. Okay, so here we can see all of life is traced back to these uh, primeval uh, protists. Okay, so again, we see our animals here, plants here, and so forth. And here's another uh, scale here. You can see birds, reptiles, amphibians. Okay, all of them are vertebrates, chordates, and then you can go further back and all the way back to the beginning, and you can see the first cell types are here, the first protists are here. So <clears throat> all of life is connected and can be traced back to the primeval prokaryotes. Now, um, fossils are very significant in the study of evolution. The fossils, of course, are the remains of extinct organisms, and um, they chronicle the evolution of a species. They are used to trace the ancestry back um, million, to millions of years ago. The fossils can evidence relationships. They can show a species were related. Fossils can provide clues about how species changed. Okay, and fossils can be used to construct a skeleton of a species, and they can also be used to give a history of the environment. So they're very important. Okay, here are some examples of fossils. Okay, now evolution is um, the changes that occur in a species over time. And the ancestral life forms evolved and branched off, eventually giving rise to all the different species. Therefore, all organisms are related. And this has been evidenced by the fossil remains. In 1859, a man by the name of Charles Darwin wrote what is called um, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. And in this uh, paper, he said that evolution is directed by natural selection. It's an editing process. The individuals in a population have certain traits, or various traits, that differ them amongst each other. And these traits are inherited. However, many organisms do not live to grow up and reproduce due to a concept called survival of the fittest. Okay, in other words, more organisms are produced than live to grow up and reproduce. For example, uh, a female fish okay, lays um, 
hundreds of eggs, but only a certain percentage of them, a certain percentage, a percentage of them will survive to reproductive age. So certain traits are not advantageous for survival, okay? Others are favorable, okay? And environmental conditions are important to consider because, for example, if we have an individual with short and sparse hair, he, may not, he might not survive a cold winter, okay? This guy probably won't survive the winter. But those, okay, with longer and thicker hair, they probably would survive the winter and be able to reproduce in the spring. So the trait then of thick hair is passed on to the next generation because it's a favorable trait for the environment. In fact, populations that live in cold climates have adopted qualities which enable them, excuse me, which enable them to withstand the cold. It was a silly example of the man because we wear coats and have heated houses, but this could apply for bears, which have fur, okay? The bear didn't have fur, wouldn't survive in the winter. Okay, there's the bear having fun. Okay, this is showing you also how natural selection occurs. So here you see this, just these couple of guys are kind of the only ones, but look what's happening, the environment, maybe the plant life is changing so that this color that they have is more beneficial to blend in with the vegetation and they're less seen by the uh, predators. So they're surviving and eventually they are dominating, okay? survival of the fittest. Okay, so next we want to take a look at um, evolution in a little bit more detail.